You form a conjunction when you assert that two or more claims are all true at the same time. You form a disjunction when you assert that at least one of a set of claims is true. We'll look at the logic of disjunctive claims in this video. You form a disjunction by saying that either one of a set of claims is true. In this case, we've got two claims. John is at the movies and John is at the library. The disjunction asserts that one of these is true. John is either at the movies or he's at the library. The individual claims that make up a disjunction are called the disjuncts. So you'd say that in this case, A and B are the disjuncts, and the disjunction is the whole claim, A or B. We're interested in when a disjunction as a whole counts as true or false. There are two kinds of cases we need to distinguish. Both the sentences on screen express disjunctions. You can represent these as claims of the form A or B. But there's a difference between the sentence on top and the sentence on the bottom. With the sentence on top, both disjuncts can be true at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. You can define a triangle as a polygon with three sides or as a polygon with three vertices, but both are equally good definitions. With the sentence on the bottom, it's different. A coin toss is either heads or tails. It can't be both. So the or expressed in the bottom sentence is more restrictive than the or expressed in the top sentence. The or on top is called an inclusive or. It includes the case where both disjuncts can be true. The or on the bottom is called an exclusive or. It excludes the case where both disjuncts can be true. When examining arguments that use OR, you need to know what kind of OR you're dealing with, an inclusive OR or an exclusive OR, because the logic is different. Here are the truth tables for the inclusive OR and the exclusive OR. With the inclusive OR, if either A or B is true, then the disjunction as a whole is true. The only case where it's false is if both A and B are false. The truth table for the exclusive OR is exactly the same except for the first row, where both A and B are true. The exclusive OR says that A and B can't both be true at the same time, so for this combination, the disjunction is false. You're using an exclusive OR when you say things like, the dice rolled either a 6 or a 2, or the door is either open or shut, or I'm either pregnant or I'm not pregnant, or I either passed the course or I failed the course. On the other hand, if a psychic predicts that you will come into some money or meet a significant new person in the next month. That's probably an, an inclusive or, since they're probably not excluding the possibility that both might happen. But sometimes it's hard to know whether an or is intended to be inclusive or exclusive. And in those cases, you might need to ask for clarification if an argument turns on how you read the or. That's about it for the logic of the disjunction. I'll finish here with the same point I made about conjunctions, namely that a string of disjunctions is still a disjunction. When I see strings like this, I think of detective work, actually, where you've given a set of clues and you've got to figure out who did it, and the string is a list of suspects. And with each new clue or bit of evidence, you systematically eliminate one of the options until you're left with the killer. You see similar logic with medical diagnosis or forensic research. We look more closely at the logic of disjunctive arguments in the video course titled Common Valid and Invalid Argument Forms.